realizing with this training camp and this hard knocks is for people like us who are much more realistic, have them at like nine wins versus, you know, like the 11, 13 people, you know, it's a very unfinished roster. And so we're going to see some imperfections here. Every team has that, you know, we're like, everybody's sitting there going like, oh man, if we let go of Reddy Stewart, he's going to be gone. It's nonsense because every team's got that Reddy Stewart, you know, every team's got that training camp guy that competes and everybody loves and everybody thinks that they're going to get picked up by another team. Um, But unless a team's sixth receiver is better than your fourth receiver, probably not going to happen. And even then you're doing it so late in the year, you don't want to learn a new offense and stuff like that. So. We've had this conversation when um, when it comes to the roster on this team, and we primarily had it in the form of talking about the defensive end position and how that's still a need. And we've tossed around different conversations between ourselves, Micah Parsons being one of them. You know, I kept coming back with the thought that, like, we're not where the 49ers are at. We're not, we're not there. Like, we can't sit there and afford to give up so much draft capital for one guy because if it – fails it still really really hurts us whereas like the 49ers i mean you could debatably argue that the reason why they don't have a super bowl is because they did take a lot of draft capital trade up for trey lance and it got him absolutely nothing right like if that was any kind of impact player or two even um you, you know you could maybe argue a case for them actually going all the way and getting a ring that might have hurt them without us actually seeing it per se but uh what i'm saying is that they still even with that kind of mistake are a playoff team are a very complete roster you know they're able to sit there and then go ahead and package more draft capital to trade for christian mccaffrey and you know they're able to afford to do that stuff because they are very deep and not saying that it might not catch up with them because it might i think pretty soon that team is going to be in an interesting situation financially and everything like that. But, you know, you look at another team like the Eagles where they're just stacked top to bottom and, you know, you feel like you've earned the right to kind of make some of these gambles and some of these moves. And I just don't feel the bears are quite there yet. I think we are in a much better position than we're used to as fans, but that doesn't mean that when you compare it to the rest of the NFL, that we're in necessarily a great position, right? I think that last sentence you said probably summarized it the best, right? Is that, and I I almost couldn't even put that to words until you just kind of said it, where we're as Bears fans really, really excited about this team and this roster, and we're like, oh, man, they might be really, really good. But I don't think any other than maybe like receiver, right? You're, You're that group of players. I don't think you envy any position on this team if you're like an elite level, like elite level playoff team. Right. I don't think the Niners are going like, man, if only we had the Bears defensive line or if we had the Bears defensive backs or if we like, yeah, they're they're good. You know, until this year and they prove it like Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon, and they have like some sort of crazy, crazy year. I don't think any team that's uh, an elite level playoff team is going like, man, if only we just had this from the Bears, then, you know. So I think, like you said, we're a year. We're still a year away. We've been saying this for a while, me and you. Um we're like exactly one year away. And the thing that's frustrating with the Micah Parsons move is we said this when Montez Sweat got traded, defensive ends are very rare to move from teams. They're kind of like quarterbacks. When you get a good quarterback, they stick around for 10 years minimum. I think when you get a good defensive end, it's very rare for them to be moved on from or traded unless you have something like a Washington situation where it's like, Oh, we have so many guys we need to pay. Um, we got to figure out a place to get rid of Montez Sweat or Chase Young or whoever. Ever since Matt Judon, I've kind of had this thought process about Ryan Poles. And this is going to sound like not liking Ryan Poles. I love Ryan Poles. Um, the one criticism I would have of Ryan Poles is sometimes he needs to be saved from himself. Right. And we've talked about that as well. Uh, Mike McGlinchey was his big uh, two, a year ago contract basically was swept out from under him by the Broncos, thankfully, well, right? What was that linebacker that went to the Steelers? Linebacker. That, or um, Yeah, that he fell to physical. That would be not a linebacker. It was a defensive tackle. It was there you go. Uh, a defensive tackle. He had a very interesting name. He was from the Cincinnati Bengals. Now he's on the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's doing pretty well. It was Larry Ogunjobi. And so Larry Ogunjobi would have been his big first three-tech uh, signing. 
right? Yeah, but when he went to the Steelers, he signed for a lot less. <laughs> a lot less. So sometimes Ryan Poles needs to be saved from himself, right? And and then I think this year, depending on how we want to believe what we've seen in like hard knocks and that Ryan Poles was offering Saquon a lot of money. And the Eagles beat him out for that. We say all these value things, value things, value things. Um, paying a top five right tackle in the league for bottom 20 production, not that great of a value. Um, high, so, trying to sign a defensive tackle um, that was so hurt that he failed a physical, not value. And then now Saquon Barkley for a max deal, not a great value. So he kind of preaches – these certain things and he doesn't necessarily, I don't know. Sometimes, like I said, he's, he has to be safe from himself with these excitement things. And then in my opinion, I think Matt Judon, if you had signed him for a third round pick and paid him like 20 mil a year um, for a 32 year old pass rusher might've not been the best valuable thing to do with a third round pick. And so what I'm saying is, I know you right mentioned, now, I know you mentioned also kind of missing out on Brian Burns to me a lot. Yeah, Brian Burns keeps me up at night personally because when you see what Ryan Poles is now willing to do for a player of that kind of caliber and that kind of stature, when you see Matthew, Matthew Judon at 32 traded for a third, in my mind, when Brian Burns goes for a second and a fifth, if I'm not mistaken, and I want to double check that trade, Brian Burns trade. Um, I believe that, you're right. That to me is an insane for a 26 year old, really, who just needed to get paid. Uh, Ryan Poles clearly liked Brian Burns. He tried to include him in the first time he went to Carolina, and he tried to give him that. The only justification I would say that we'll never know the answer to is was Carolina so damaged by Ryan Poles' trading of them? that they would never do a deal with the bears again. Um, however, I find that hard to believe because if you had said to Ryan Poles, like, Hey, give us our second round pick back next year. We know it's going to be like a top 33, 35 pick and give us your third or maybe your fourth this year. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Brian Burns keeps me up at night. And that one kind of like, if he had the opportunity to do that and maybe he was too a little bit high on himself lately, where he did not pull a trigger on a Byron Burns trade, I, I think that's going to be a problem. And so now you look at it, and now we're talking about Trey Hendrickson for a second. We're talking about Matthew Judon for a third. Uh, we're talking about, I don't know who's going to be available. Micah Parsons, I mean, that starts at Khalil Mack, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I know a guy you mentioned before too, Cameron Jordan, might be the actual realistic move here. And to me, that's why I'm I'm going to be watching uh, New Orleans really closely this year from the perspective of I really hope they suck because that team is ready to be stripped apart for, for like, gutted for parts. And I think Cam Jordan's, like, target number one. I don't really know who else makes a lot of money on that team, but that cap situation is an absolute travesty. I think Derek Carr's expensive. I'm pretty sure Taysom Hill's expensive for some reason. We're just going to see how this season plays out. And we are a year away, like we say, but so you don't really need to do anything drastic in my opinion. But if you start off like on the positive end, four and two, right? Um, five and two, four and three, you probably are looking at that like, man, I think we might have something here because if you're doing that without that second defensive end, I do think that a second defensive end puts you over the top, probably puts you in playoff contention or even like somebody like Hassan Reddick. If the jets are just like, you know what? We traded him for a second. You can give us a third. We'll take a little bit of a loss and we'll get him out of our hair. So as long as the bears are willing to pay him. 